Hello everyone. Welcome to DSP NIT AP. This is Dinesh of 3rd year BTech ACE department. In this video we will solve the example 5.1.5 and 5.2.1 in the book Digital Signal Processing by John G. Proakis. Okay, first let's start with the example 5.1.5. Here given a linear time invariant system is characterized by impulse response h of n as given and he is asking to find out the spectrum and the energy density spectrum of the output signal when the system is excited by the x of n as given. Okay, now let's start solving this example. Before solving this example we have to know one of the standard discrete time Fourier transform pair of a power n into u of n where module less than 1 is 1 by 1 minus e power minus j omega. So from the above standard discrete time Fourier transform pair we can write the dtft of h of n and x of n as shown. Since we know for a LTA system h of omega equals to y of omega by x of omega now on substituting x of omega and y of omega in this equation, we get y of omega as shown. And hence we have computed the spectrum of the output signal. Now let's start solving for energy density spectrum. Energy density spectrum can be computed as mod y of omega whole square. In y of omega, expanding e power minus j omega as cos omega minus j sin omega we get y of omega as now on separating the real and imaginary parts we get y of omega as now on calculating mod y of omega square we get it as now on expanding and solving this we finally get mod y of omega square as shown hence we have computed the spectrum and the energy density spectrum of the output signal now let's see the MATLAB execution of this example. And h of n is 1 by 2 power n into u of n. Since u of n exists from 0 to infinity, let us take n values as 0 to 10, some finite values, and let us calculate x of n and h of n. Now we know for omega, we know that x of omega is periodic function, that is, it exists, uh, that is, it is periodic from 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi. Let us consider in minus pi to pi interval the positive side that is 0 to pi. So uh, uh, let us consider omega range as 0 to pi uh, in which we are dividing it into find out one parts for accuracy. So now let us calculate x of omega and h of omega with DTFT equation. Uh, we are substituting x of n and h of n in this equation to obtain x of omega and h of omega. Now after obtaining x of omega and h of omega we have to calculate y of omega now uh, which we already calculated in the slides y of omega which we obtained as uh, 1 by 1 minus 0.5 into e power minus j omega into 1 minus 0.25 into e power minus j omega which is uh, here we have taken ones of 1 comma phi not 1 because uh, uh, 1 should be an array uh, and its length should be of phi not 1 because here omega length is of phi not 1 omega we have taken phi not 1 length means it we have divided uh, it into phi not 1 part so its length is phi not 1 so we have to consider 1 as also an array of phi not 1 parts now since we know since uh, mm, we don't know y of n is a real or complex uh, we have to calculate its magnitude phase and real and imaginary parts also uh, we, we can calculate its magnitude with the function abs of y and its phase with the function a angle of y and real and imaginary parts with the function real and imac. Now we have to also calculate the energy density spectrum of y of omega which is mod y of omega square. Since abs of y implies mod y, uh, we are calculating mod y of omega square. Now let's plot these in different figures. In figure 1, let's plot h of n and x of n. In figure 2, let's plot the y of omega, that is its magnitude, its angle, its real part and its imaginary part. In figure 3, 
let's plot the energy density spectrum of y of omega that is s that is mod y of omega square now let us run this program here we can observe that impulse response h of n is 1 by 2 power n into u of n this is the impulse response and excitation signal that is x of n is 1 by 4 power n into u of n this is the signal and the spectrum of y of omega this, this is the magnitude part of the spectrum of y of omega this is the phase part of the spectrum of y of omega and this is the real part of the spectrum of y of omega and this is imaginary part of spectrum of y of omega here uh, we can observe that uh, we are dividing the omega axis which we have taken from 0 to pi by pi so that we are getting uh, 0 to 1 and here also we are getting uh, everything is 0 to 1 because we have divided the omega axis by pi units for our uh, conveniency. And the, finally, uh, energy density spectrum, which is also asked in our question, and this is the energy density spectrum of y of omega, that is output signal. Here also we are uh, dividing the omega axis by pi units for our better understanding. We have successfully solved example 5.1.5 and seen its MATLAB execution. Now let's start solving example 5.2.1. Here they have given a difference equation of the system and they are asking to compute mod h of omega square. To solve this we have to know the time shifting property of the jet transform and it is shown below. Applying Z transform to the given difference equation and on solving we will get H of Z as shown. Now to calculate H of Omega from H of Z, first we have to check whether H of Omega exists or not. That is DTFT of H of N exists or not. For that to exist, the ROC of the H of Z should contain the unit circle. So to get ROC of H of Z, let's find out the poles of H of Z. On solving this, we will get poles as 0.4 and minus 0.5. Now let's represent poles with yellow color and unit circle with blue color and a region of convergence with green color. Now for the poles minus 0.4 and 0.5, there will be three possible cases of ROC that is mod Z less than 0.4 and 0.4 less than mod z less than 0.5 and mod z greater than 0.5. In these three cases, mod z greater than 0.5 is the only case of ROC for which system includes unit circle. And hence for this we can calculate h of omega. Hence we got h of z and its ROC mod z greater than 0.5 which consists of unit circle. So h of omega exists. So now let's calculate h of omega. In question they have asked mod h of omega square. For that first let us calculate h of z into h of z inverse. And then we will substitute z equals to a power j omega. Because we can get dtft from z transform by evaluating z transform on unit circle. Now on substituting and solving we get mod h of omega square as shown. Hence finally we got mod h of omega square as 2 into 1 plus cos omega by 1.45 plus 0.16 cos omega minus 0.8 cos square omega. Now let's see the MATLAB execution of this example. We are taking omega from 0 to pi and dividing it into phi naught 1 parts. We are taking it from 0 to pi since it is periodic from minus pi to pi. We are considering it positive side that is 0 to pi. Now we obtain h of omega as 2 plus cos omega 2, 2 times of 1 plus cos omega by 1.45 plus 0.16 cos omega minus 0.8 cos square omega. Here um, we are considering uh, 1s of 1 comma 5 comma 1 comma 501 
this is because of uh, this is an array cos omega is an array of phi not one uh, part phi not one elements so we have to um, we have to get an array of ones of phi not one elements so we are considering this as ones comma uh, one comma phi not one which creates an array of phi not one phi not one elements of ones we know since uh, everything is cos terms and uh, there will be no imaginary part in h of omega but we will we will also we will calculate those and uh, observe in graph uh, magnitude is obtained by the function abs and phase is obtained by the function angle and uh, its real part is obtained by the function real and imaginary part is obtained by the function imag in uh, in the question they have asked the magnitude square of h of omega that is uh, uh, mod h of omega square now let's plot these in different figures in figure 1 let's plot the h of omega that is uh, magnitude of h of omega angle of h of omega real part of h of omega and imaginary part of h of omega in figure 2 let's plot the magnitude square of h of omega that is mod h of omega square which is asked in our question now execute this pro now we will execute this program here we can observe this is the mod h of omega square that is magnitude uh, square of h of omega uh, here we are obtaining it from 0 to pi and we are dividing it by pi units uh, so that we can understand it better. And this is the magnitude part of the spectrum h of omega and this is the phase part of the spectrum h of omega. This is the real part of the spectrum h of omega and this is the imaginary part of the spectrum h of omega. Here we have divided. Here also we have divided in all these graphs uh, omega axis by pi units, so that it it, occur, it occurs from zero to one. And we can so that we can better understand that. Here we can observe that imaginary part is zero. As we have observed, uh, it it consists of only cos terms. We can observe that here imaginary part is zero, and there exists real part and its magnitude part. And here we can observe it has zero. The reference for the above two discussed examples are taken from the book Digital Signal Processing by John G. Proakis. With this, we will end our video. Thank you.